what I'm going to do now is I'm going to do some soft hammer percussion. Um, basically, it's very similar to hard hammer percussion. Uh, like I was saying, uh, the difference is my working edge has gone from the entire face to literally just the very edge of the, of the piece I'm working on. Um, what I've done is I've actually set one up is I've created a, a striking platform, which is right, right there. You can see it's, it's fairly pronounced versus the rest of the edge. And you'll notice that it lines up with uh, one of these Aris ridges that I was talking about. And um, you'll see that it goes on a bit of an angle. So instead of hitting straight in, I'm actually going to follow swing following that so that I can maximize uh, that ridge. And hopefully I can at least get a bit of a flake to come at least this far. I have a bit of a, a hinge termination right here that might mess things up. So hopefully I'll at least get a flake to go to here, but I'd like to get it um, out there as well. Um, the, the thing, the reason I'm doing this is I'm going to take this, this piece of rock, this piece of obsidian, and I'm going to produce uh, a biface. And in order for me to do that, I actually want to thin this thing down quite a bit. You'll see that it's quite thick. And by taking off these flakes, I'm actually going to be reducing that thickness to a much more manageable, manageable size. Um, again, the, the tool that I'm using corresponds to the type or size of flake that I want to produce. Um, I could use a much larger billet, um, but this piece is actually kind of small for something of this size. Uh, and it's also because it's obsidian and breaks so easy. If I were using uh, a piece of flint or quartzite or something like that, um, because it's a harder material to flake, I would actually use a larger um, billet. But because it's, <coughs> excuse me, because it's obsidian, I can get away with using uh, a smaller, smaller billet. Um, there's a number of ways I could do this. Um, the way I prefer to do it is I like to keep the, the rock that I'm working on on my leg so that um, all I have to do is sort of hold it on the other end. Um, and then when I strike it, all, it doesn't go anywhere. Um, I know if I wanted to, and in some of the flaking that I do, I will actually hold it sort of freehand and I'll just place my hand here and, and strike the edge. The only problem with doing it that way is I end up having to use nothing but my hand. And so if I want to produce a big flake and I use a harder swing, what happens is I'll hit it and my biface will turn right? And I won't get the flake that I want. So if I keep it on my leg, when I strike this, the rock itself doesn't actually move that much. And that way I can control it and actually produce a much larger, much larger flake. And all right, now let's just do it. Here we go. And again, what I'm going to do is I'm, instead of coming straight down and sort of going this way, I'm going to strike it on an angle so that I can maximize using that ridge there. The one thing about soft hammer percussion is the flakes are much, much thinner. And so actually getting flakes, to, especially when you're using obsidian, that don't break in the process, um, it's quite common that they'll, they'll actually snap in half. And you can see, if I put that back together, there's the, the ridge, and there's actually another ridge over there, and it sort of followed both of them. Fortunately, I was able to get past that little um, hinge termination. But you'll see, I produced, I didn't remove a lot of my edge. Like, there's, there's the original edge there, and I barely removed any of that edge but I was able to thin a fairly large section of this, of this rock. And so <clears throat> now what I'll do is I'll set up another one. And uh, one of the things about making uh, a stone tool is these large dynamic, large flakes that, that we're producing are actually a fairly small part of the process. Um, you'll find that a lot of the debitage that we produce is me just taking off these tiny little flakes, sort of modifying the edge, getting it ready to strike another flake off. I don't like that. Let's get rid of that.
And all I'm doing right now is um, I'm taking off all these tiny little flakes, sort of getting um, my striking platform to the point where when I strike it, um, I've actually got a better chance of producing the type of flake that I want versus just something that's a bit random. Alright, I don't have any I don't have any rid very good ridges to follow. I've got a ridge that sort of goes there and I've got another one there. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a flake off in here and I'll create a ridge here and a ridge over here and then I'll be able to work it a bit better. There. So what I've done is um, I've created two good ridges, a ridge there and a ridge there. And at the same time, I've actually thinned that edge quite a bit. Um, and again, I barely removed any of that edge. Like you can see the tiniest little part, part of that has been removed, but I was able to actually thin, thin that surface quite a bit. <clears throat> and then again, I'll just get it all prepared. You kind of want to keep in mind what you're doing. You never want to just randomly hit this thing. Um, basically your goal, what you should be doing um, when you're producing a tool is actually see the, pick, the tool in the, the rock that you're working. And a lot of times it's, it's like sculpting. You're just removing the rock you don't want anymore, right? And so um, it's, you never want to just randomly uh, strike this thing. You're always sort of thinking two or three flakes ahead, right? So I know I'm going to remove this flake here and then what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to set up another platform over here and follow this ridge and then I'll thin that and thin that. Even though this is a fairly homogeneous material, um, what will happen sometimes is you can actually see um, right here, this is where um, it's actually been struck prior to me using it. And so I know that, you, it's probably kind of hard to see, um, but there's actually uh, a, Hertzian, a little Hertzian cone right in here mm. that when I work this area, it's just going to be junk. And I know that, but I'm going to be able to, to work around that. Um, a lot of times when you're working the, on the stone, you can actually see um, some of the, the fractures and inclusions and stuff like that in the, in the cortex or the, or the rind, which is this outside stuff. And this is the weathered surface. Like this rock sat on the, on the surface and this is the rock actually starting to break down. Right? And what it'll do is it will accentuate these little fractures and, and Hertzian cones and pits and ash inclusions is another thing that you'll find in here quite a bit actually. Where's that one flake? It has a perfect, like you, you most of that stone is, is actually quite homogeneous, but you can see right there, yeah. there's a little ash pocket yeah. that uh, fortunately I was able, to, I missed it. Had I struck that, um, it would have definitely messed up the flake I was trying to produce. Right? Um, so that's another thing you always want to keep in mind when you're doing this is, yeah, you want to <clears throat> um, flake this down as much as you can, but you always have to be watching the stone itself because you can't see what's inside. But every time you remove a flake, you might be able to just see a tiny little fracture or a little piece of that ash pocket. Or, you know, you'll be able to see those little pits and, and, and um, previous flake scars that are already in there and you have to sort of modify your plan around that as well, right? So, all right. So anyways, I'm, what I'm going to do is I'm going to strike, I'm going to try and remove this piece here. The problem is I've got that, that cone right there and it looks like it actually extends, this whole part here looks kind of junky, but I'm going to try and see if I can't remove some of it. 